This instructional DVD is provided as a guide for the staff of CentreCare. The DVD outlines the approach to safety checking of the CentreCare vehicle in its daily environment. Please be assured this is a thorough but basic check of the vehicle. You do not require any special skills to be able to complete a vehicle inspection. Your main task is to follow and complete the current Centre Care vehicle inspection form using your observation to carry out basic testing and adjustments. More importantly, to report damaged, faulty, missing or overdue items. Why are Centre Care vehicle safety checks necessary? Required documented evidence for Centre Care's continued funding under legislation, audits carried out by DSQ. Good maintenance system. The vehicle safety checking form provides good basic information to assist keeping the vehicle in good condition. You won't miss a service. Work health and safety. Centre Care vehicles require regular maintenance to ensure they remain in active service in the community. Maintaining the vehicles is important to ensure safety of our clients and staff. Who needs to see the vehicle inspection form? Staff require the form as a reference guide to carry out work on a CDS vehicle. The coordinator of that location where the vehicle belongs to must receive a copy of all vehicle checks. Your transport office reviews the CentreCare fleet vehicle every three months, performing a quarterly vehicle safety inspection or requesting relevant documentation. They report directly to CentreCare's manager, property and procurement. There will be a written questionnaire to accompany this instructional DVD and test your knowledge of safety procedures. It's recommended to become familiar with the vehicle owner's manual and service booklet. Use this as a reference when required. To complete a CDS vehicle safety check, the vehicle safety inspection form and following equipment is required. A tyre pressure gauge, a tyre tread depth gauge, a rag to use as a gripping aid and to check fluid levels such as oil, clipboard, CDS vehicle inspection form and pen. Tools for holding down the brake pedal. A step ladder to inspect the roof of the large vans in service. It's recommended the vehicle be on a level surface. Check the handbrake is on when parked. Ideally, the car should be in a cold state, as the readings for engine fluids and tyre pressure may be inaccurate unless sufficient time is given to cool down. The monthly maintenance checks and quarterly vehicle inspection form are required to refer to during the viewing. This inspection is carried out every three months as a report to both the coordinator and your transport office. This document is used for DSQ audit purposes. The monthly vehicle maintenance checks are used to ensure services are booked in and maintenance is carried out regularly. A designated staff person fills out the form. A copy is sent to the coordinator to inform them of the vehicle's current maintenance being undertaken. Fill in the required sections at the top of the form, such as vehicle registration number, mileage, date and person completing the checks. Refer to the registration sticker for information and the speedometer in the dash for the mileage. Recording general wear and tear on the vehicle. The form should be marked with a cross for any problems and ticks if the inspection is okay. The monthly vehicle maintenance form has a diagram to mark the areas of the vehicle with damage. If any faults are marked on the form, this should be described clearly in the notes section. The form is then faxed to the coordinator. The order for the following inspection is not important so long as the item is covered and the form is correctly filled out. In summary, the car inspection is done in five steps. Fill in the top section of the form. Services and Certificate of Inspection. External Inspections. Under Bonnet Inspections. Interior Inspections and Testing. First, fill in the top section. It was important to identify the vehicle when the inspection took place and who was performing the inspection. The current odometer reading. This will determine the service intervals. 
The motor service due date is read from the service reminder sticker on the windscreen as a guide to show when the next service is due. Also check the owner manual for the service stamp to confirm the accuracy. The services are due either from the date of the last service or mileage, whichever comes first. Inspect the punch tag date and add six months to determine the due date for its next service. This is the same for the fire blanket. Check the fire extinguisher is secure. Check needle indication is in the green area on its pressure display. For vans, this item must be serviced promptly or the COI will not pass. Make a note of the hoist service due date. If there are any problems, contact the hoist servicer. Look for the contact number of the servicer on the hoist. For center care buses, you need to record the due date for the COI using the reminder sticker or current certificate of inspection. A booking date is needed to be set before expiry, but you can arrange extension of time. Please remember, no current COI equals no insurance. Record the expiry date on the registration sticker. For buses, the registration is non-payable if the COI expires. For cars and buses, the registration sticker must be removed if it has expired. There's a 21-day grace period after the expiry date to put the new sticker on. The accountant is in charge of the registration payments. A full walk around the vehicle is required to record any panel, glass or light damage and look at general cleanliness. For damage to bumpers, check closer to see if the bumper bar is secure. The vehicles need to be kept in clean working order. The driver must be able to see properly through the windows for clear and safe driving vision. Using a stepladder, safely inspect the roof for damage or rust. Lift the wiper arms to inspect the arm and blade condition. If damaged, there may be signs of deterioration and breakage. Test the operation of each door and its window. Inspect the tyre with the tyre tread depth gauge. Tyre tread depths cannot fall below the legal limit of 1.6mm. Also report any uneven tyre wear to the tread pattern. There are markings on the tyre indicating the minimum tread depth. If the tyre is on this mark, it needs to be replaced. Inspect the tyres for any signs of tyre wall damage. A tyre tear is a potential blowout risk. Contact the recommended Centre Care Tyre Garage for advice. Recommended tyre pressure levels are displayed in the vehicle, normally on the driver's side door jam or petrol flap. Using the tyre pressure gauge, obtain a reading from the tyre pressure level. It needs to confirm the vehicle's pressure level label information. It is not recommended to put air in a tyre if it is very hot. Very low pressure levels may indicate slow leaks caused by punctures. If a tyre has low pressure, look for signs of a puncture and have the recommended centre care tyre garage inspected. If the vehicle can be driven on the faulty tyre, Ensure you can pump enough air into the tyre for the trip, otherwise RACQ should be notified to assist with the removal of the tyre. Do not attempt to drive on a flat tyre. This will destroy it. In cars, ensure the spare tyre is secure in the boot and has correct tyre pressure. If the tyre is upside down, it needs to be released by turning it over to get to the valve. This needs to be done at least once on the quarterly inspection. If the tyre is too heavy, refer to a Centre Care approved tyre professional for assistance. Inspect the fuel cap is secure and no fuel leakage issues are apparent. Inspect the van's spare tyre is secured at these points. Pull on the frame to test it's secure. Check frame brackets are bolted in place. The main hook bolt is fully tightened. Tyres need to be lowered to test the pressure safely. If the tyre is too heavy, refer to the Centicare approved tyre professional for assistance. The spare tyre pressure needs to be checked at least once every quarterly inspection.
quickly check under the engine for any black messy buildup. If stained, this may indicate an oil leak and the van will not be passable by the COI. Have the van inspected by a CentiCare approved mechanic immediately. Turn the van wheelchair hoist on, unlock the lock pin if it has one, and fully unfold all the way to the ground. Then fold back to the top and turn off and lock up. Report any leaking problems with function and any damage that might be seen. Please consult the car owner's manual to get information on the vehicle's underbonnet layout and basic maintenance instructions. Inspect the oil by removing the dipstick and wipe it with a clean rag. Reinsert and remove again to inspect correct oil levels. The oil level is acceptable if it is least halfway between the low and high marks on the dipstick. If the level is below, this needs to be recorded as requiring attention. Inspect the coolant reserve bottle is showing between low and full. If the water level is low, fill with water. However, this needs to be thoroughly checked at a workshop in case of radiator or hose damage. Inspect the power steering and brake fluid is at the correct levels. If the levels are low, have the CentiCare approved vehicle specialist check this. Check and top up the windscreen water if required. Check the connections on the battery are clean and secure. Remove caps to check the water levels. If the battery is sealed, this is not necessary. The pump should always be used with a reliable tyre pressure gauge to measure the PSI or KPA. With the battery exposed and after checking thoroughly, connect an electric tyre pump taking note of the connections to the positive and negative terminals. Only use if available. The vehicle's engine must be running to avoid draining the battery while in use. Also, whilst the engine is running, Describe any odd sounds or irregular engine revving noises. Remove the rag used and close the bonnet fully. Inspect seat belts by plugging the belt in and tugging on it firmly. Unplug, allowing the belt to retract. Also look closely for signs of wear and tear. Check the complete set is in the van and tucked away in the bag. Inspect the floor clamps by testing them in the floor individually and check for any signs of damage. Inspect lap belts for tears and clip together. Any problems need to be described in the report. Inspect grab handles, testing their strength and security. Test the fold down step is working correctly. Test the modified seats. Are they secure in the floor? And do they fold up securely, ensuring the belts are working properly by inspecting for wear and clipping together? Check the following items are in the vehicle. The service owner's manual is the guide to the vehicle's safe operation and manufacturer's service requirements. The car warranty is important to maintain. Also notice what services have been done and when the next service is due. Check the fuel card is in the vehicle. After a good search, if the card can't be located, report the missing fuel card to your coordinator immediately.
the accountant can cancel the card and reorder a new one if necessary. Check the first aid kit is in the vehicle. For a more complete inspection of the first aid kit, please refer to the current first aid check form available from RDU. Report if the kit is missing. Does the vehicle have a properly fitted eToll tag mounted on the inside of the windscreen? Check the disability parking permit is in the car and record the expiry date. The parking permit is preferably attached to the windscreen. Report if the permit is missing or out of date. Inspect cleanliness inside. Is there any rubbish? Are the windows smudged? Are the seats soiled? Are the floors vacuumed? Does the vehicle have any odour? Is there any indication of eating or smoking in the vehicle? Check the handbrake is fully applied. Mark the report if it was not on when you got into the vehicle. Now with your foot on the brake, put the vehicle in neutral and ease off the brake. Is the car secure with the handbrake applied? There should be no movement. Put the vehicle back in park. The handbrake should always stay on full. Press the horn to hear its sound. Report if there is no sound. Check the fuel level is above a quarter tank level. You may need to turn the key to accessory position. Test the windscreen wipers and jets are functional. Report if the wipers are streaking or jumping and also report if the water jets are not working correctly. Test all the inside lights are working on the ceiling and any doorstep lights. Ensure these lights turn off when the vehicle is locked. Start the engine to check the instrument lights are functional and if a warning light displays. If a warning light displays, mark this on the inspection sheet. Test the air conditioner is working normally. This is also very important if driving in poor weather conditions, as the demister will clear the windshield faster. Test the cigarette lighter, either by a charger or seeing the heat on the vehicle's cigarette lighter. Test the electric windows and mirrors are fully working. With the engine running, check that the front lights are working. Check the front park lights. Check the front indicator left and indicator right. Check the headlight low beam and headlight high beam. Note that utilising a partner or a reflection on a wall can make light inspection easier. Turn the engine off and inspect the rear lights are working correctly. Check the rear parking lights. Check the rear indicator left and indicator right. Check the brake lights via a partner or reflection back in your rear view mirrors. Also check by utilising a long object, such as this sign, to hold the brake pedal down. Make sure the engine is off and the vehicle is on a level surface before testing the reverse lights. Thank you for taking the time to view this training DVD on Centercare Vehicle Safety Checks. If you have any questions, please contact your transport office or Centercare Manager, Property and Procurement.